Bruchim Aboim. Thank you for coming. Tonight's topic um, is about apologizing. Uh, we all make mistakes. Uh, we hurt other people. We inconvenience people. Embarrass them. We do that with words and or actions. And an apology, in reality, can correct the damage that we do or not. And that's what we're going to try to discuss. How do we apologize? What works? What doesn't work? Um, for openers, sincerity. That understanding why the other person was embarrassed or hurt. Because if you don't understand why they seem to be upset, then you really can't deal with it properly. So sometimes we have to put ourselves in the other person's shoes and understand where they're coming from. And in this way, something that may not bother us may have been devastating to them. Um, we, we, we know sometimes there are situations where we know we should apologize, but somehow time seems to pass and we feel embarrassed or uncomfortable and we avoid the person rather than face them and deal with the situation. So one needs to know that the longer you wait to do it, then all of a sudden you create a, the wall gets higher. So no matter how difficult it may seem, things always seem worse when you look and look at them from coming in front. When you look back, it's much easier. So it's just a matter, just do it. And you'll find, hopefully, that things will be better. There's nothing worse than seeing someone and trying to avoid them, um, or a gaze, and all of those things. Um, sometimes we apologize, <laughs> but we add the word but. Um, and when we use the word but, then it kind of undoes the sincerity that we had. We're kind of apologizing with an asterisk. And we're really making the person part of what we could call contributory negligence that you really have a part in this. And that's not really an apology. Um, that's sharing the burden. And someone's saying, like, you're the better person that you've brought this to light. Uh, so the word but should never be used. Also, there are times when words aren't enough. If you've been to someone's house and um, you spilled red wine on their white carpet, Saying you're sorry may not be enough of a thing to do. If you've broken something, um, anything, especially something that's expensive or special, um, you need to not only say you're sorry, you need to at least make the attempt to make amends. And even if they say that's okay, you don't have to do it. So if you're not going to replace the item, you're not going to clean the carpet, Send a box of candy, send some roses, do something over and above saying you're sorry because sometimes it's just, it's just not enough. So we need to know that also because some people are just very kind and uh, you can do anything and they're not going to make a point of it. It doesn't mean they're not hurt. Uh, I mean, no one wants anything they own destroyed in any way, shape, or form. Nor do we want to do it, but a sincere a act of gratitude, not just the words, come together helps to make the point that you really do feel bad. Um, one of the worst things you can say to someone is, I'm sorry that you feel that way. <laughs> um, so their sensitivity is what you're do dealing with, not your bad choice of words or actions. So you're just, again, making them the problem, not you. And it's even if they are overly sensitive, Number one is, A, hopefully you should be aware of it. But if you weren't aware of it, then again, your apology should indicate that you didn't realize that that was a sensitive subject. Uh, sometimes a person has had a certain tragedy that you didn't realize uh, in their family, and you are talking about it something in a way that sounds a bit callous, and you didn't mean to hurt a person. So you need to address these type of things. And again, always have in mind that whenever you're apologizing, you're not dealing with you, you're dealing with the other person. It's not to make you feel better. And that's the problem because really when we apologize, we want to kind of take the guilt that we have, the, the, the bad feeling we have and give it to the other. We, you take this from me. 
And that's not the idea. What you really want to do is, is alleviate and eliminate the difficulty they feel, even if you have to go through some difficulty to do so. Another problem that we have is, if you apologize, what we expect is immediate forgiveness. I said I was sorry. Well, sometimes that works and sometimes that happens. But sometimes what you've done is so grievous and so deep and so uncaring that just a off-the-cuff, I'm sorry, is just not enough. Um, sometimes the person needs time. And sometimes, which is even maybe even more difficult, the person needs to vent. Sometimes what you need to do is just be quiet. Let the person, if you've really hurt someone, if they can get it off their chest. Because the worst thing that in a relationship between people is harboring feelings inside that you don't let out. Because if those feelings are not brought out in the open, then they stay within a person and they only fester and it gets worse. And the whole idea, again, if why you're apologizing is to try to rectify things, to try to put things in a better way, to be more caring. And again, to be in, your, in that person's shoes, would you like to be there? And when you really think about it, no one does. We all want to, we don't want to carry that around. No one, you know, we really need to go through life light. When we t put, keep these things that we don't take care of, we walk around carrying a burden. And life's too short to carry all of that. You know, you put two and a half pound what weights on both your ankles and you'll finish the day dead tired. It's only five pounds. It's a whole lot of weight to be walking around with. And carrying things where we should have apologized is another one of those burdens. Again, avoid um, justifying your actions. <laughs> whenever you make a mistake, whenever you've hurt someone, uh, everyone has a reason. I mean, unless you're, if you, and if you don't have a reason, if you just hurt someone because you wanted to hurt them, you're not going to apologize. You did exactly what you were trying to do. The reason why you're apologizing is you did something that you didn't mean for that result to happen. So you made a mistake. So explaining it's a waste of time because the person already knows you made a mistake. All you want to do is try to smooth it over by letting the person know you're sorry. That's it. And just letting them know you were wrong. You know, kiss, keep it short and, short and sweet. That's it. You don't need to go into a whole speech, you know, and let the person know all the little reasons as to why. Because, again, generally speaking, the end result will be is that they be, they're part of it. That's not what it's about. All you want to do is just say that you're sorry. I was wrong. Not that you took it the wrong way. Because, again, that's an insincere apology. You said you're sorry, but in reality, it's their problem because they took it the wrong way. Don't ever apologize in the middle of an argument. Because in the middle of an argument, no one really hears anything. If there's an argument going on, it's like grabbing a hot pot. If you grab a hot pot, you're going to get burned. Pick up that pot an hour later the next day, you can hold on to it forever. That timing is everything. That when a person, when you're arguing and you try to apologize, many times the person is just not listening. And just hearing, I'm sorry, then may not be the time. Again, you need to be considerate of what you did and who the person is. So, again, give it some time. Give it a little bit of distance, not too much, as I mentioned before, because that distance will grow. Today we have a uh, great tool, email, and or sending a text. It's, it's a great tool in certain ways, but it's also a cop-out. So if you've insulted someone in person and you send them an email or a text saying you're sorry, you're really not facing up to what you did because it does take a certain amount of guts. And the person sees that you really care if you take the effort to, if you insulted them in person, to approach them in person. And when you do, be aware of body language. I'd like to apologize. I mean, I, I'm really sorry. 
it means that you're really not sorry because the person's looking at, at, at your face and your body as to what you're doing. Don't cross your arms. Don't, don't cross your legs. It, it, it's, it has a negativity to it. Don't have your fists clenched. Have your hands open. I mean, all of these little things, they're, they're so small and they're so big because everything that you do, the sincerity that you project, has, has more meaning than the words that you use. A touch, reaching out to someone, a hug. And all of these things come together to take this apology and make it something that is real and sincere. At the same time, one of the problems, and we all know the people, over-apologizing. You apologize. The apology is accepted. Let it go. Some people will, will, will beat the horse to death. And that, I just come, every time they meet, the first thing out of their mouth is three apologies. I, mean, I really, you know, on and on and on. It makes it, it, it you know, it, the person's going to avoid you. It becomes worse. And not only that, other people sometimes hear. And that's another thing to be careful with. That sometimes what you've done is in private. And you've insulted someone in private. Keep it private. If it was, again, we'll talk about this next week. We're going to connect how this also has to do with God. And how religiously do we look at this whole concept of apologizing. But if you've insulted someone, if you've hurt someone privately, there may be something that's personal that other people don't need to hear. Again and again and again, put yourself in the other person's shoes. You know, we're all, it's an interesting thing. We, in, at, at the core of who we are, we're really all the same physically. The only thing that separates us is the, is the gift wrapping, skin. But as far as our organs are concerned, we're all the same. That's why you can do transplants. It's the gift wrapping that makes us different. What you feel, other people feel. What makes you happy makes someone else happy. What makes you sad makes someone else sad. And many times we don't say it because it, it doesn't seem mature. It doesn't seem like the right thing. But that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. We just don't say it. And we keep it within. There are basically three R's. Regret, responsibility, and remedy. And that becomes key. You need to regret that you did something to someone. You need to accept the responsibility for what you did. And you need to really remedy the situation. You can't keep apologizing for something and expect someone to keep forgiving you because it means you really don't care. So you have to do some sort of remedy to the thing in order for all the other two of regret and responsibility to really take hold. Three R's. What about the other person accepting an apology? What do you do? And even with that, you need to be gracious. If someone has gone out of their way and has recognized the error of what they've done and you see by what they've how they approach you, what they're saying, what they're trying to do here, that they sincerely want to apologize, they really feel bad about it. That's not the time to beat them up. Just when they apologize, just say thank you. And what you've done is made a friend for life. Because they may deserve to be told off, so to speak, but that doesn't get anywhere. It just it creates bad feelings, and when you walk away, you don't necessarily walk away with what you were trying to do. So when a person apologizes to you, again, you also need to put yourself in their position. And if you just say thank you, it's amazing what can be done. Two words from that person, I'm sorry. And two words from you, thank you. And the truth of the matter is the world's a much better place and things move along a lot better. What I'd like to do next week, God willing, is deal about God willing. That how do we look at this in a religious way? How do we deal with our apology to God? And how do we bring all this together, looking at the Torah, to see how this comes together? I want to thank you all for coming. God bless and be well. Have a great Shabbos.